Farmer Gopi went to his field unhappily that day. Because even though it was summer, his field was still not yielding any crops. Oh, my field has not yielded any crops today either. What am I going to do now? If I can't deliver crops to the kingdom, I'm going to be in trouble. One day, just as Gopi was about to give up digging on his barren fields, his shovel hit a hard object. Huh? What's that? Hmm. As he continued digging, he realized that it was a pot. What's a pot doing in my field? And it's empty inside. Ugh. Gopi was very unhappy that he had spent so much effort with no reward. He dropped his hoe in the pot and lay under a tree to rest. After a while, when he wanted to take his hoe to return home, he realized that there were 100 more hoes in the pot. What? How can this happen? I only have one hoe. Gopi emptied the pot full of hoe, and this time put his shovel in it. But what is that? Another 100 shovels immediately appeared in the pot. Or is it this pot? A magic pot? Who would have thought? Gopi was both amazed and thrilled. He brought the pot straight back to his house. He excitedly tried a chicken egg in the pot and left it in the pot. Soon, the pot was overflowing with eggs. <laughs> I can't believe my eyes. Then he put his apple and bread in the pot. The magic pot gave Gopi hundreds of apples and bread. Now I don't have to deal with this barren field. I can sell these multiplied products in the kingdom market. Every day, Gopi took the pot's multiplied goods to the kingdom and tried a new product every day. One day clothes, the next day vegetables, and another day beans. Whatever he put in the magic pot, it multiplied. Other sellers were jealous of his success and complained about Gopi to a soldier of the king. The next day, the soldiers secretly followed Gopi. Gopi took the magic pot that morning and put a chick in the pot to sell at the kingdom market. A little later, hundreds of chicks came out of the pot. The soldier couldn't believe his eyes. With hundreds of chicks running around Gopi's house, one accidentally fell into the pot, producing another hundred chicks. Gopi even had a chick on his head, under his chair, and in his dinner plate. The soldier immediately went and told the king what he had seen. The king ordered that Gopi and his magic pot be brought to him immediately. Gopi went before the king, and the king confiscated the pot from him for the kingdom's treasure. Gopi was very upset. Let me take a closer look at this magic pot that will enrich my wealth. <laughs> the king approached the magic pot and bent down into it. My king, be careful, please. But just then, the king slipped. He could not keep his balance and fell right into the pot. No, the king has fallen into the cauldron. Oh! In just a few minutes, 100 more of the king had formed in the hall. The soldiers were confused about who to obey. Kings were fighting each other for the throne, each claiming to be the real king. I am the real king. No, it's me, the real king. No, I am the real king. Shut up. I am the king. When Gopi realized how dangerous the magic pot could be, he sneaked out of the palace during the confusion and took his pot with him. He went straight to a cliff and
and threw the magic pot off the cliff. The pot disintegrated into pieces and disappeared. From that day on, Gopi's field began to grow crops once again. And Gopi understood that the land became fertile not by magic, but by labor. And he lived in wealth forever. One eye, two eyes, and three eyes. In a land far, far away, there was an old woman who lived with her three daughters. The eldest daughter was one-eyed. The middle daughter had three eyes. And the youngest daughter had two eyes. Their mother, the old woman, loved the oldest two the most. She would do whatever they wanted. Thank you so much, Mother. The youngest daughter was always given the chores and housework. Even while they told her she was useless and incompetent. And they didn't even invite her to their dinner table. Mom, Two Eyes doesn't deserve to eat at this table with us because she can't do anything right. But I'm... So, the mother did not let her two-eyed daughter eat with them at the table. She was given only the leftover food after everyone left the table. Nevertheless, she kept her heart kind and helpful. One day, her one-eyed and three-eyed older sisters came to the girl with two eyes. They insulted her and threw dirty laundries on her. You didn't wash these clothes well. Watch them again. <laughs> two eyes left the house crying. She went to the river to wash the laundry again. Why are my sisters treating me like this? What did I ever do to them? <laughs> While the two-eyed girl was weeping, a fairy appeared before her. The fairy dazzled the two-eyed girl with her shining outfit. But she kept her face hidden from her. Why are you crying, two-eyed beautiful girl? Because I'm the youngest in the house. My mother and sisters say I'm useless, and they hate me, and only give me scraps from the dinner table. <laughs> oh, don't be sad, pretty girl. Look, I have a present for you. This is a magic wand. If you make a wish and wave the magic wand three times, it will come true. When the two-eyed girl made a wish, a dinner table appeared. The table was filled with delicious food. Ah, look at these dishes, all warm and fresh. Two eyes had been hungry for days, so she started to eat from the food on the table. When you're done eating, you only need to wave the wand twice, beautiful two-eyed girl. Remember, only twice. The fairy disappeared without showing her face. The two-eyed girl, after having a good meal, waved the wand twice. And the table vanished. Oh, I'm finally full. I'm so happy. But I have to hide this wand from my sisters and my mother or they will destroy me for it. The two-eyed girl returned home using the wand as a walking stick. She noticed the leftover food on the table, but she didn't eat it because she was full. Two Eyes took her walking stick and went out again every day. She went to the water's edge, waved her wand, and ate as much as she wanted. But one day, when she returned home, her older sisters, One Eye and Three Eyes, noticed a change in their younger sister, Two Eyes. Why do 
has two eyes smile every time she goes out and returns. And she doesn't eat the scraps we leave her. The next day, the jealous sisters followed her when two eyes went out. After a while, two eyes came to the water's edge. She made a wish and waved the wand three times. And a table full of delicious food appeared. Seeing this, the sisters were astonished. Ah, so she fills her stomach with delicious food every day. And she doesn't share it with us either. One eye and three eyes ran home and told their mother what they saw. The mother could not believe what she heard, and she was very angry. Everyone hid before Two Eyes returned home. As soon as the girl entered the house, her mother came up to her and took the wand in her hand and broke it in half. No! Why did you do that? You were feasting on delicious food while we sat at home starving. No more food for you in this house. Two Eyes was so upset that she took the broken wand and went outside crying. At that moment, the mysterious good fairy appeared before her again. Don't cry, two-eyed beautiful girl. Take the pieces of the stick and bury them under the moonlight. You will smile again. The mysterious fairy disappeared before the two eyes could see her face. Two eyes went and did what the fairy said. The next day, a tree with silver leaves and golden fruit grew where she had buried the pieces of the stick. It was so majestic and bright that everyone could see it. Two Eyes mother and sisters wanted to go to the tree and collect some fruit from it. But whenever the sisters reached out for the fruit, the tree branches were lifted up. Seeing this, Two Eyes came to them immediately. Maybe I can pick a fruit from this beautiful tree. Huh, we couldn't even get it. How will you succeed? Two Eyes stretched out her arms towards the tree. Give me some fruit and some joy, tree of glitter. After the kind words, the tree bent its branches in front of the Two Eyes so that she could easily take the fruit. Two Eyes wanted to give some of the fruit to her mother and sisters. But they were crazy with jealousy. Oh, well, I can do that. Watch. Give me some fruit and some joy, tree of glitter. Give me some fruit and some joy, tree of glitter. But the tree did not respond to what one eye and three eyes had said. <laughs> How is it that this tree only obeys two eyes' orders? At that moment, a handsome knight approached, galloping on his horse. Get out of here, two eyes. Hide behind the bushes. Do not embarrass us with your selfishness. Poor two eyes obeyed and hid behind the bushes with the fruit in her arms. When the knight came near the silver-leaved and golden-fruited tree, he stared in amazement. Wow! If the owner of this magnificent tree would give me a silver branch, I would make her the happiest person in the world. We are the owners of this tree, sir. I can give you a silver branch. One eye and three eyes jumped and jumped to pluck a branch from the tree. But in vain, they couldn't even touch a leaf. You said this tree belongs to you? Then why can't you... Pluck even a single fruit from it. Two Eyes wanted to come out and share her fruits with the knight, but she was afraid of her mother and sisters, so she stayed put and started to cry. <laughs> and then the mysterious fairy appeared again. Beautiful Two-Eyed Girl, 
take the leaf of the tree and put it in your heart. Then face the night without any fear. The two-eyed girl did as the fairy told her, and her worn-out outfit turned into a bright, sparkling dress. She immediately came out of the bush where she was hiding and faced the night with the fruit in her arms. The knight was fascinated by the beauty of two eyes, and he couldn't take his eyes off her. I can give you a silver branch with golden fruit, sir. I want to make you the happiest woman in the world, beautiful-eyed girl. Will you marry me? Two eyes immediately accepted the knight's marriage proposal, and they embraced each other. Seeing this, the jealous sisters and mother apologized to Two Eyes. We thought you were incompetent because you were younger than us. But you are pure-minded and kind-hearted. Sorry, sister. Two Eyes forgave her sisters and mother. The silver tree is now yours. You can get as many fruit as you want from it. After these beautiful words of Two Eyes, the mysterious fairy appeared on the top of the silver leaf tree and showed her face for the first time. Two Eyes was very surprised to see that the fairy had three eyes and realized that people only need a good heart to do good, no matter how different they look. Then Two Eyes and the Knight got on a horse and rode off to eternal happiness. Once upon a time, in a small town lived two siblings, a boy and a girl. The boy's name was Harry, and he was so naughty. And the girl's name was Sally. She was very smart, but also a bit forgetful. Harry and his older sister, Sally, were very poor. They often went to bed with their stomachs empty and were hungry every day. At night, it was hard for them to go to sleep because their stomachs hurt. One day, Sally was so hungry, her stomach would not stop rumbling. Oh, we haven't eaten a bite for days. Sally wanted to take a walk in the park to forget her hunger and left the house. She took her canteen of water with her. After a while, she wanted to drink some water and rest. However, just then, an old woman in shabby clothes appeared before her. The woman slowly walked up to Sally. <laughs> Girl, give me a sip of water. I haven't had a drink of water for days. I'm so thirsty. <laughs> of course, here you go. You can drink as much as you want. The old woman drank the water and turned into a beautiful young fairy in an instant. A fairy! I want to thank you for your help, beautiful girl. Make a wish. My brother Harry and I are very poor and hungry for days. All right, look on the table as soon as you get home. You will see a magic bowl. A magic bowl? Yes, when you say cook bowl, cook a hot meal. It will cook for you sweet porridge. When you say, stop bowl, I'm full, it will stop cooking. Now you and your brother will never go hungry. Thank you so much, young fairy. Hey, little girl, don't forget the magic words for the magic bowl. Sally ran back home. Indeed, as the fairy said, there was a bowl on the table. Hmm. Sister, where did this fancy bowl come from? It's not fancy, Harry. It's magical. This is a magic bowl. Okay, but what good is an empty bowl even if it is magic? Now, be quiet and watch. 
cook bowl, cook a hot meal. After the magic words, the bowl suddenly got hot and started to cook sweet porridge. But, but this, how, how does this happen? The bowl is truly magical, so we won't be hungry anymore. Harry and Sally ate not one or two, but ten plates of sweet porridge. And when they were finally done, Sally said the magic words to stop the bowl from making more. Oh, I'm finally full. This porridge is delicious. Oh, I could eat this every day. <laughs> mm -hmm. You'll never believe how I got this. Magic. Indeed, Sally and Harry ate sweet porridge for days and never got tired of the taste. One day, before Sally went out, she wanted to tell her brother Harry how to stop the bowl from cooking. Harry! Harry! I have to tell you something very important. Come now. Harry ignored his sister's call and didn't come to her. So Sally went to him. But just in that moment, she forgot what she was going to say because she was often forgetful. Ah, uh, what is it? Why are you standing over me? I'm sleeping, can't you see? I was going to say something very important, but... You forgot, huh? Classic Sally. A sister with a fish memory. Don't be so mean, Harry. Anyway, I better go. But once she was outside, Sally remembered what she had to say to her brother. Oh, now I remember. I had to remind him how to stop the magic bowl. Oh, well... Harry won't wake up until I get home anyway. But sure enough, Harry woke up while she was away and got up from his bed and went to the table because he was very hungry. Cook bowl, cook a hot meal. The magic bowl started to heat up immediately. The home smelled of sweet porridge again. Harry had eaten a large plate of sweet porridge and wanted to stop the magic bowl from cooking. Oh, I ate so much. I think that's enough for breakfast. Stop, bowl. Don't cook, magic bowl. Um, stop. But the magic bowl didn't stop cooking because those were not correct magic words. Um, dish, pocus, hocus, stop. The magic bowl did not stop. It continued to cook sweet porridge. Oh, no. What am I going to do now? This bowl won't stop. Stop, broken bowl. You're making a disaster. No matter what Harry said, the bowl kept cooking sweet porridge. By the time Sally returned home, almost the whole house was full of porridge. My brother probably hasn't woken up yet, so now I'll cook him a delicious porridge. Wah! What is this? When Sally couldn't open the door of the house, she looked through the window. And what did she see? The whole house was sticky and full of porridge, Help! as her brother Harry Help! couldn't stop the bowl from cooking. Help! Oh, this is awful! Harry! Uh, oh, sister, help me! I'm gonna fall in! Stop, bowl! I'm full! After Sally's magic words, the bowl finally stopped cooking porridge, so Harry was saved from drowning in porridge. Ha <laughs> ha! Hey, yeah! <laughs> Thank you, Sally. What are we going to do with all this sweet porridge now? Our house is all porridgey. Sally had a great idea. She immediately went and called her other poor neighbors in the neighborhood. Each of them lined up outside Sally's house. While Harry filled the plates with delicious porridge, Sally handed them out to their hungry and poor neighbors. Thank you so much, Sally. You have fed our hungry stomachs. Yum! So delicious! Harry and Sally were very happy to help poor people like themselves. It felt good to help out their starving neighbors. Then, an old, poor-looking man came to them. Oh, it is true. A magic bowl of porridge. I've been walking for days to find food for my wife and children. 
I am so tired. Please, give me the magic bowl that I may go home and feed my family. What are we going to do now, Sally? If we give the magic bowl, we'll both starve. Don't think like that, Harry. The man's children are hungry. Children should not go hungry in this world. Take the bowl and take it home to your family. At that moment, the man turned into a beautiful young fairy. You... You are the fairy who did me a favor. You have made me really happy, Harry and Sally. You fed the poor people living in the town and helped the man whose children were hungry. In return for your favor, you can keep the magic bowl of porridge forever. You deserve it. Really? really? <laughs> <laughs> Hooray! Hey. Every day from then on, Harry and Sally continued to hand out porridge to the poor people of the town. Their generous hearts became as sweet as the porridge they shared. As they saw happy children, young and old people with their stomachs full, they also lived a happy and peaceful life. <laughs>